Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the BlackBrazilToday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So tonight's video came about uh, when I came across this uh, <laughs> this this YouTube short a couple of days ago. You know, when I first saw the video, I thought it was kind of comical at first. Um, actually, I was just, it was only like 40 seconds long. So I was really, I was going to just uh, turn it into a short. You know, I was going to just, you know, feature the 40 seconds about it, uh, you know, 40 second video and just, you know, offer my own, you know, commentary on it. But then as I thought about it, when I saw what the woman in the video was doing and her perception uh, her view on the topic, I says, well, you know, there's a lot to be said about, you know, what she's, I don't know what her experiences have taught her, I guess you could say, you know, I don't know who this lady is. I'm just saying I came across this video and I, like I said, you know, sometimes I, I think about doing a shorter video, but then, you know, I get to thinking about it and other thoughts come to my mind and pretty soon it becomes a, you know, a, a you know, a 15, 20, 30, 40 minute video. So originally, like I said, it was going to be just a short, but let me show you this video that I was talking about um, because it, it touches on a topic that, you know, I've covered periodically, you know, there's several articles on the blog and I've actually done maybe a video or two on the YouTube channel just talking about this very topic. OK, so what is it that I saw in this video that, you know, influenced me to, you know, offer commentary on it? OK, so check out the video. It's only like 40 seconds long. Um, so it's, it's a black Brazilian woman and she's given her interpretation of the difference between what to expect from a white man in bed versus a black man in bed. Okay. So in reality, you don't even really need to speak Portuguese to understand what she's saying here because it's, <laughs> it's very little that she says, just pay attention, you know, at the eight second mark, at the beginning of the video, she introduces it and she says, you know, do you know what the difference is between a black man and a white man in bed? You know, Omi Preto is black man. Omi Branco is a white man. So at about eight seconds, she starts to imitate what to expect from a white man or perhaps what her experiences have been with a white man. Then at about the 24 second mark, look how she imitates the black man. Now, my question would be after you watch this video, is this just a woman reacting from her own experiences? Is this a stereotype? Um, does her view have any merit or was she just being funny? Uh, first, let's let's check out the video first and you tell me what you think. Vocês sabem qual é a diferença do homem branco e do homem negro na cama? Vou mostrar a diferença. O homem branco. Parece que tá fazendo aula. E o preto? <laughs> so, as I said, when I first saw this video, I thought it was comical, but then it just led me to... Uh, to think more on what it is that she was actually, the point she was trying to get across in the video. And it made me think of several articles. What she said applies to several articles that I've already done on this particular topic. And it applies also to an article that, you know, I read, I think back in 2020, and I says, wow, this would be the perfect time to, to go into this particular piece. But first, let me um just go back a couple of the articles that I had done in the past on this very topic. Um, black masculinities. This is from 2021. Being a black man in Brazil is to live with a series of stereotypes, which, in, which include, uh, which involve gender, race, and social class. From 2020, myth about black sexual power frightens white men. Now, when you see a title like that, that I just read, I mean, some people might think, okay, that sounds ridiculous. But Seeing the title of this particular article, it actually takes me back to when I was like, I must have been 17 or 18, 19, somewhere in there. And it was the first you know, white girl that I had dated. And I just remember that, 
you know, the young lady that I was dating, there was a, a, a guy that she had grown up with. She had went to middle school and high school with this guy. And, you know, he always thought that he would be the first one to, to get with her. And so then I came along and it, it, I guess it just kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> it just it just, uh, you know, knocked his plans out of the water. I don't know. But she would go about telling me some of the things that he would say when I wasn't when I wasn't around. You know, I would pick her up from school and he'd be like she'd be like, you know, you know, David said this. He said that. Oh, you're going out with your big, you know, N.I.G. He, he would say. It's like, oh, my God, I can't touch you after you've been with him. You know what I mean? And it was just like it was so funny to me because this guy didn't know anything about me. But just being black, what that means in somebody's mind, you know, what images he con con conjures up in his mind without even knowing who I am, not even knowing my history. But, you know, and this is what I'm saying. It was just like I've run into this a couple of times. You know, people like to deny that some people think this way. But, you know. There have been, you know, sayings that, you know, if, if a white woman gets with a black man, no white woman, no white man is going to ever want her, her again. I, you know, I'm not saying that's, you know, the case, you know, across the board, but I'm saying I personally have seen that. You know, I know other black men who have talked about this also. Right. So it's not something that we're just imagining. And, it, and I'm clearly I'm not talking about all white males, but I'm quite sure there are some out there who continue to think that way. All right. What else we have here? OK. This is another story. Matter of fact, I think this is the same story, the story talking about living with a, a series of stereotypes. So being a black man in Brazil is to live with a series of stereotypes. This is the one I just read. The title It says, uh, this is an article by uh, Caro Ito. And it says the sexualization of the black body, the idealization of the negon, the straight up, the big black man, good in bed, wild and virile is one of the stereotypes that accompany the ideal of masculinity of the black man. Even the, even today, the virile black man that's good in bed permeates the imaginary uh, surrounding the black man. Okay. Like I said, I've seen this myself. Um, this is an, this is an old article from uh Hasa Brazil magazine. Again, the only, uh, magazine in print on Brazilian newsstands that is is features primarily black Brazilians and has a primarily black Brazilian audience. Okay. So this is a story from this article. Why do black men prefer blondes was the topic they were talking about. This must somewhere between 96 and 98, this article came out. So anthropologist Ana Lucia Valenci in her book, Ser Negro no Brasil Hoje, or Being Black in Brazil Today from the publisher Editora Moderna, uh, remembers a time when she was talking with friends in a bar, when she saw a couple in the bar, the man black and the woman a blonde. Immediately, there was an awkward silence in the bar. All eyes were on this couple. At the first moment, I heard comments from nearby tables. Uh, he must be rich. Otherwise, he couldn't go out with a blonde like that. What interest could a blonde have in a black guy? She must not be able to get anyone else. This guy must be very good in bed. OK, so, you know, <clears throat> obviously I translated this text from the Portuguese, but I'm just saying. Uh, if, if you look at it, it's like the same images that people have a black man wherever we go, whether it's in the United States or this particular piece is from Brazil. I mean, you've heard about the stories of white European women traveling across certain countries in Africa, I mean, you know, and on sexual tourism. Right. Let's keep this moving. <clears throat> Here's an article from 2017 entitled, You Look Like Someone Who Has Good Sex. Can the black man be allowed to enjoy full humanity, humanity without extinguishing certain stereotypes? OK, so this is just a number of articles that I've uh, I've done in the past on this very topic, which brings me back to today. And what again, watching that short video by this woman, you know, it made me OK. I want to cover another article because it kind of speaks to what she's talking about. OK, so today's article today's video good in a violent and aggressive way are black men expected to be better in bed than men of other races so let's dive straight into this article i'm <clears throat> curious to know what you all will think about it at the end okay this is a photo of some black brazilian men i think from gq brazil the brazil edition of gq gq magazine okay 
I don't know all of these guys, but I know this guy is an up and coming model. You know, I forget his name, but matter of fact, I was supposed to do an article about him some months ago, but I know he's an, uh, he became a model. He's from the, you know, the, the city of Salvador Bahia in the Northeast. Okay. Today's article is by Paulo Alexandri Ojosco. You are a negon. Again, negon meaning like a big black man, a straight up black man, right? You are a negon of the color of sin. And you are certainly well hung and good in bed. I have fetishes for the negon. I was always in the mood to go to bed with a negon. Wow, I imagine this negon in bed must do some damage. This negon must have the pegada without a shadow of a doubt. Now, when they say pegada in Portuguese, the word literally means footprint, but the way people use pegada in the slang, what they call the gidia, it means uh, a man who is assertive, uh, very manly, very aggressive <clears throat> when it's that time, right? When he's with the woman that he's with for the night. And if she's really feeling him like that and he's got a certain force and aggressiveness, then they say she, he has he has pegada. That's what that's the best. I don't know if there's any one English term that I could use to translate that. But this is what they say about men who have that certain uh, that certain something, something in the bedroom. Right. This is what they say. He has pegada. OK. Um, it may seem funny to some or even cliche or even a memory of the song by singer Alcione, Mil Ebeno, meaning uh, my ebony, but I knew that this is a common. This is commonly heard by black men, whether they are hetero effective or homo effective. So he's speaking about the song called "Mil Ebeno" by a longtime singer uh, Alcione. Um, I just remember there was a uh, an Instagram video that was going around. I don't know, maybe about a week or two ago that I saw, and it was like, okay, first of all, the song "Mil Ebeno." It just it's it's a uh, they, they're almost calling it like a, an anthem for black men because the song speaks of the positive attributes of black men or whether from for their color, for their charm, uh, for their, you know, like I said, the skin color, the way they are with women, um, that little certain something that black men have. So the song is called Mill Ebeno. And when I saw the video, it was just like it, somebody put together a little video and it was like, OK, the text says. This something to the degree of this is how black men react when they hear Mil Ebeno, this song by uh, Alcione. And you see men in the video just stop everything they're doing to do a little samba to this song. It's almost like, again, it's like like a, a national anthem for the black man. This is Brazil has so long thrown dirt in the, in the black man's face, like all the negative stereotypes that go along with being black. And here you have Alcione put out a song like this. And it makes every black man feel like he's being honored. He's being worshipped, right? <laughs> I can't play the song because, you know, YouTube al algorithms, you know, I might get a copyright strike. But definitely go and check out the song on YouTube. It's called Mil Ebeno uh, by Alcione. Um, and this particular video is featuring actor Ayotun Grasa. So anyway, check the song out. This is actor Douglas Tavares. So from the point of view of the protection of the social construction of race, the black male carries a negative charge in this context and certain definitions that even before he knows himself are already stipulated by others. A little research and study is enough to know that since the dark times of slavery, the black man has been categorized as an object and a dominated being who was there to carry out certain jobs, among them the manual jobs of force and plowing, or even the absurdity of satisfying the lust of his dominators. Okay. Anthropologist Dr. Osmundo Pino, a master and doctor in social sciences, this is him here, in his brilliant article, What is the Identity of the Black Man, tells us that the male black body is fundamentally a body for work and a sexed body. It is fragmented into parts. The skin, the bodily marks of the race, hair, features, and smells, the muscles or physical strength, sex genitalized uh, dimorphically like the penis, a phallocratic symbol of the plus of sensuality that blacks represent and which ironically means its return to the realm of fetishes animated by the white gaze. This is actor Jonathan Azevedo. I, rem I remember it as if it were yesterday. 
close to 22 years old, a great friend told me in a conversation where we talked about amenities that I, as a black man, must be good in bed and that several women must throw themselves at me. I was surprised by the statement and made it clear that clear for that person that I was homo effective, meaning he was gay. She still insisted on saying so. So then men threw themselves at you, where she added that a black man that's gay is a waste. Imagine that. It turns out that even having years of friendship, she didn't even know, she didn't even have knowledge of other previous relationships of mine or lasting relationships in which my partner was introduced to her or in which we hadn't even gotten together. She simply deduced that due to my color and my physical size, I'm 6'1", that I must be good in bed in a violent and aggressive sense, as in P-O-R-N films in which the stereotypes of black men, whether heterosexual or gay, are good in bed and aggressively treat their partners. Almost an animal act with affection, acting with a sexual impulse without any rationality. So listen to what he's saying here. I mean, this is why I had to include that video because it's, it's saying, OK, the stereotypes of the black man, they are good in bed and aggressively treat their partners almost an animal act without affection. I mean, verbally, this is what the black woman was saying in the video that I introduced in, in this particular uh, in this video that I'm doing right now. The question is. This was the opinion of a black woman. So does it make it racialized when a black woman says this about a black man? She racializes it by the fact that she's comparing her perceptions of a white man versus a black man in bed. Now, nobody can say, you know, people have their opinions. You know, if you, you talk to 100 women who had relations with black men and white women, or you talk to 100 black women or white women who have had, you know, sexual relations with black men, or white men and see what their opinion is on this. Maybe they have no opinion. Maybe they see it as a stereotype. Maybe they've never noticed any difference. But then again, maybe there's some validity to what the lady said. I'm just saying the, the question always comes down to why is it that black men are always narrowed down to a couple of things like, OK, he has to be he, he must be a, a rapper. He must be an athlete. Um, he must be good in, in bed. These are the, the attributes that are associated with the black man. But the other attributes that have to do with being rational, being a thinker, you know, being a full human being, it just eludes black men and black women as well. Because the global stereotypes, you'll notice this is not just a stereotype in the United States or Brazil. It's like global. People think this way when they see black men. He must be a great athlete. Right. This is actor uh, Rafael Zulu. I myself have already been hypersexualized and used as a trophy for a former relationship where I was our friend. He hit the jackpot. Look at this nigga on your dating. Before even knowing any possible qualities, my color, my body was sexed and used as an object of gain and merit for others who don't even know my history. The problematic question which takes me back to the beginning of the text and to the great questioning of this text would be the objectification of the black man, the transportation, transformation of affection into a mere object of pleasure of others without any thought of the other, only in the pleasure of the one who transforms the other into an object. Imagine if I was a straight Imagine if I were a straight white cisgender man, I wouldn't even need to be writing this text about the hypersexualization of my body or the inevitable naturalization of the objectification that black bodies suffer to satisfy sexual fantasies of whites. And we become the sexual trophy they often show off or show off rather. We can also deal with this in a very simple way, where it is a common fact that it is known that white men exercise with every right their sexuality and their desires without it uh, categorizing them emotionally, intellectually, and or sexually transforming them into a mere object of desire and fulfiller of other people's fantasies. Okay, Two more actors, Rafael Logan and Sergio Maya, uh, Malieros. Okay. The classic hyper hypersexualization is present in everyday life and in certain ways is the most subtle so that they are naturalized and passed to certain unnoticed eyes and ears in particular. It's enough to see that most black models are wearing white speedos with the purpose of marking their genital organ and activating the sexual imagination of their viewers, aiming to draw attention and focus on sexualization to the extreme degree of the black body. 
The hypersexualization of black bodies inhibit or even dare do, do I say reduce the exercise of sexuality or the possibility of the person to show themselves without sexual prejudices in their fullness to be transformed into an object, taking away from him the obvious ability to love his body without ties and without reflections and consequences of judgments that shouldn't even exist. The simple fact of posting a photo in Speedos takes away all his black intellectual capacity. His knowledge is reduced. He is cut off from the possibility of being a thinking black man. And it also extracts from him the, the ability to be an emotional human, to give him a classification of a sexual object, aiming at the satisfaction of the white imagination and his fantasies of black bodies, in which they insist on bringing up, in a way that I dare to say, quite perverse, and resumes the colonizing mentality of being a slave to satisfy his pleasure and not the visualization of the other as a human, okay? These are five finalists from the 2016 Mr. Black by Year contest. Although hypersexualization is actually a problem of those who do it, not of those who show themselves, of those who feel good about their own bodies, but are comfortable in their own skin, we are not always able to visualize in this way because we are taught many times that our bodies are public. Bring it to the reflection about what beauty, aesthetics, and physical attributes are is an extremely relevant and necessary exercise for the understanding that leads any human beings to imagetic uh, projections of their own sexuality and of the other, in addition to the contained eroticism. These projections also help us to understand a little bit about where the black male body has been socially constructed through eroticization and as an object of desire for whites. The need of the black man, from my point of view in the debate, is in fact to understand that he has no need to fit the stereotypes created by society or those created to satisfy the fantasies of whites, and that he can go beyond the sexual issue and affirm his sexuality in the totality in the way he deems best and most convenient, without fear of being objectified to meet desires and understand that it is okay to love himself, to like his body without prejudice or need for approval. It's necessary for the rest of the community, whether they have direct contact or not, to be able to see that we're not just a sexualized body or an object for satisfying their desires, but men who are whole, thinking, rational, and with emotions that must be respected and not reduced to the phallus. So the invitation is, when was the last time you, a black man, saw yourself as a person you see in your eyes and not with the eyes of the objectifiers who turn you into a satisfier of their fantasies. Okay. Today's piece um, was taken from the site uh, Mundo Negro, which you translate into, you know, Black World, one of the biggest Black media outlets in, uh, in Brazil. I think this article is from 2020, and I thought it was just very telling. I wanted to share this because when I saw that woman's video, I'm like, this goes perfectly with what this guy was talking about in this article. You know, I, I get people who have uh, commented on the blog or rather on the this YouTube channel saying that, um, you know, why isn't this a good thing? You know, uh, there was a video that I did where the guy, I think it was a comedian, he was either a comedian or actor. I don't know. The dude had an Instagram page and he was talking about, you know, he was in a relationship with a black woman. And he was asking, why is it that random white women are slipping up in his DMs in his Instagram? And some people commented on my, you know, on that video and says, you know, what's the problem with that? You know, having access to white women, isn't that a good thing? Well, the point here is, and I've asked this before. When people and society continues to have a certain image of black men, it kind of limits. Uh, I'm not going to say it can limit a black man in what in terms of what he can achieve in life, but it's very limiting when the whole society looks at him in a certain way. You expect the the brute, the brawn, you know, out of control, the aggressiveness, you know, the physicality. But you can't associate him with having certain positions as CEOs or you know, being in professions that require him to be a thinker or use more of his rational sense. So, you know, that's every time I do a piece like this, this is what my whole point is. OK, black men, you know, I've seen it in the United States and now I'm seeing it in Brazil where 
not only black men, but black women are speaking on the need to stop the objectification of the black body as if it's just there for pleasure and work. Remember the old Brazilian saying that says a white woman is made for, uh, for, for marriage, a mulatto woman is for sex, and a black woman is for work. So in those two, you see the mulata in Brazil, which is basically a black woman. And you see the negra, the, the clearly black woman, and they're both seen as objects just for sex and for work. So anyway, I just wanted to bring a reflection because after seeing the video that that woman posted, I'm like, there's so much in what she said and what she didn't say. And so I'll say, you know, the stereotypes we have about black males in the United States is the same that you'll find in Brazil. So anyway, wanted to share that. Uh, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are about this topic. What did you think about the video uh, that the woman posted? Um, what did you think about Paulo Alexandre Hoskul's uh, breakdown of this topic, the hypersexualization of the black body? Um, curious to know. You know, drop a comment in the comment section. Definitely like this video, share this video. Um, consider subscribing to this channel if you found more than a few videos that you you know you found intriguing. Um, smash that notification bell so that you'll be one of the first people to see my videos as I post them up. And with that said, I'm going to end this video here and uh, invite you all to come out and check out my next video.